Hi, Camp Craytroy. My name is Chris Barnes, and I run Escape the Creek. And we create escape room adventures you can play at home. And right now, with schools being out and being stuck inside self-isolating, you might be thinking what you can do to get your life to be a little bit more adventuresome. Well, I have a few ideas for you today of how to create your very own murder mystery or escape room within your house to play with your family members while you're stuck inside. Now, I only have between three to five minutes to give you as many ideas as possible. So I'm going to kind of speed through this. But if you guys have ever done an escape room before, you know you need to solve a series of puzzles and riddles and solve codes to be able to find an object or to escape the room. The first step in creating one for yourself is to come up with a good theme. It could be something like running from a zombie, being stuck in the Titanic, or you could actually steal something in the house like the ingredients for tonight's dinner or the movie you're going to play or a piece of a favorite board game and lock that up and people have to solve puzzles to be able to find that hidden object. One of the most important parts about an escape room is having a good code. And I mean a code that's able to be broken by people that's easy to do and does not take too long to crack. So I have a couple of codes here for an example. So I actually have three numbers up here. Three, one, and 20. If you create your own escape room, you might try to lock something up and you give them these three numbers and you say, hmm, find wherever the object is. You have to try to crack your first code. For this one right here, you could stare at it for a while. Eventually, you're probably going to realize these might be talking about letters. And I mean the third letter in the alphabet, the first letter, and the 20th letter. Piece those together and you look and you go, hmm, one, two, three. C, 1, A, and then blah, 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 blah. Oh, 20, T, cat. So this just led you to a word cat. Now, if you're doing an escape room or a treasure hunt in your own home, you could actually hide something where your cat is, like maybe below the litter box or where the cat food is. And that can be where the next clue is. I have another code for you here, which are three letters. And maybe a previous puzzle had given you the answer to go down one. Well, if you have the letters E, P, and H, and you're told to go down one, maybe you could go down a letter and get D, O, G. So once again, you could hide something in your dog toys, or maybe below your dog's collar if your dog lets you do that. Something like that to get you to move along through the house. Now, you can actually lock things up in the house if you want to, which you can go from location to location, finding hidden objects. Or if you want to, people can just tell you the codes, and you can just give them the next clue when they get the right one. That's not quite as much fun that way. I always prefer locking things up for an escape room. If you ever have a chance to lock up like a medicine cabinet or a toy box or maybe a door into a room that you don't go into a lot, that is a little bit more exciting finding that physical key or using an actual padlock or a number lock to be able to find the code. If you also have a chance to have people reach into something that something's hidden inside of, that's always a really cool idea. Now, parents, if you've been reading a book together or you've been watching a TV series together, you can always create a murder mystery based on that book that you're reading or the TV show you're watching. For example, maybe there's a character in, this, in the story that has a certain catchphrase. You can design a murder mystery where they have a certain room in the house blocked off and they say they can only look into it as a crime scene and you have a coded message with that phrase that that character says that could be part of a clue that that character committed the crime. Or it can use inferencing, one of those reading skills that we practice at school, and it can actually have objects from that character hidden around the room. If the character likes to eat sunflower seeds, you have a sack of sunflower seeds in the corner. If the character is a mother, you can have a baby doll in there. Something like that that can help lead them to find who the person was who had who done it. So just a couple of quick ideas for you. Hope everyone stays safe out there and try to find some way to create some puzzles and create your own adventure in your house while we're stuck inside. Thanks so much.